At the request of some friends, I'm going to show you today how I created this Mandela. I began with the source image. It's uh, from a spiral staircase at a local church. I find I like church architecture for creating mandalas. I like the um, verticals that you get. I like the arches. They, they really add to a mandala nicely. So to begin with, I'm going to resize the image. Make certain that you have this, the height and width, bracketed so that they maintain their relationship. So I'm going to take it down to a width of 10, and I do that only because it's much easier to do the math with a whole number. Okay, so now I'm going to select it, and I'm going to copy it. I like to use Control C for copying. And then I'm going to change the canvas size. I'm going to go from 10 inches to 20. I'm also going to make certain that I have clicked over here so that the blank space of the canvas is on the right side. Then I'm going to paste. I like to use Control V to paste. And then I'm going to move this over and flatten it out. Layer, flatten. I'm going to select it all again. Control C to copy. I like six repeats most of the time. Sometimes four are great, sometimes five, depending upon your source image. This one I want like six petals to the Mandela flower. So I'm going to back, go back over to canvas size. That turns this into a 60 inch width. Again, make certain that I have my new canvas over. Click OK, and then Control V to paste. Control V to paste again and move that one over. And as you can see now, I've filled up the canvas. I'm going to flatten down all the layers. And now we start the fun stuff. We're going to go to Image Size. We're going to unclick these brackets because now we're going to make the height and width identical so we have a square. The 60 inches now becomes 6.667 to match the height. Now, for most mandalas, I find I like to then switch the rotation and invert it. And we go to then Filter, Distort, and Polar Coordinates. Click OK, and oh my gosh, look at that. That looks cool just like it is. But I like to put a frame around it. I like to make a kind of a dimensional frame. So I'm going to go over here and click my elliptical marquee tool. Start at the very, very corner of the image. Drag it down so I have a nice, perfect circle. You can see my little pink lines popping up at the edges. And it's going to take me a second to get this perfect. There we go. I'm not seeing my pink lines on the top and left side, so I'm going to start over again. Bottom right looks good. So I'm going to unclick that, and I'm going to go and drag that up there again. Well, this looks pretty close. We're just going to go with this one. And then I'm going to copy that. Control C to copy. Control V to paste it. Over here on the Layers panel, you'll see I have two layers. Let's double click on the background. Layer 0, I'm going to click OK. Control A to select all and then delete it. Now I have a transparent background. So I would like to see that background a little bit bigger so I can see my border edge. So I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size. Let's make that 8 by 8. There we go. I have a little room to work here. OK, uh, to create the frame, I'm going to select my Magic Wand tool. I'm going to be on the layer with the image and click it. And you can see it's got all the transparent area. 
what I want to do is create a circle. So I know that there are a hundred ways to do this and I know somebody's got a better way to do this, but this is just what I'm going to do right now. Uh, under select, I'm going to click uh, inverse. So now that circle's selected. And I'll create another layer then on top of that. And I'm going to fill it. Let's, let's choose a color for the foreground. Usually I like to pick a color from the image itself. This yellow will end up looking gold on the frame. So I'm going to go to this last layer I created and fill it. Fill with foreground color. Okay. Uh, we're going to put that behind the image and then control T to transform. I'm going to hold down shift T to maintain that circle shape. Make it a little bit bigger. That's going to be the basis for our frame. I want to make certain I have that perfectly centered. So I'm just going to go over here and you can see some nice lines are showing me where the edges of things are. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Here we go. So it looks like we're centered well. So I'll put that back behind. Oh, we are not centered well because I moved this other image by accident. There we go. Now I need to cut a hole out of my yellow circle. So I'm going to go back with the magic wand select the original image, select inverse, click on layer 2 which is the yellow circle and hit delete. If we then turn off the image layer we find we have a nice ring going on. Okay we can turn that back on, click on layer 2, click the effects button and then we're going to go to bevel and emboss. You can see I have an inner bevel it's smooth. The depth's about halfway. Um, angle, I've got minus 30. Here's the important one for this nice bevel. You have several different choices. My favorite is the second one in the second row. Opacity on the highlight mode, about 75, also on the shadow mode. And click OK. And you can see that our bevel now has created a nice gold frame around our Mandela. Uh, if you want to see the punch with the different colors for the background, you can fill it with many different colors, but black usually makes it pop. And there you go, there's your Mandela. Uh, again, here's my original image that everybody wanted to see how I did. And here it is done. I'm going to be putting up a couple more uh, mandelas that are done in a slightly different way. Also what I call my fantasy worlds. That works well with a landscape picture. Um, so I hope that you'll come back soon and I will be talking to you again. Goodbye.